as you said, um, we are going to share with you the situation analysis that we did in Northern Summer. And I'd like to acknowledge uh, the help of Ms. Bahe and Ms. Um, Mariano uh, in this project. Next slide, please. So uh, here, um, I'm just going to give you uh, the key messages that it's going to be embedded in the discussion. So everything that I'm going to discuss is in the context of these key messages. Uh, one is that the, the the first key message that we're putting forward is that uh, there is a timing of intervention is a critical element in implementing social programs. And uh, the second one would be not all municipalities are created equal. Um, and there are many elements here, but we're going to focus on the in terms of um, resources and in terms of the behavior and attitudes of uh, the LCEs. Uh, and then the third one would have something to do with, with poverty, uh, the lack of economic opportunities, and geographical isolation. And then the fourth one has something to do with the supply side, and the fifth one has something to do with uh, the nurturing care practice. Uh, next slide, please. So for key, going into key message number one, uh, the timing of intervention being a critical element in implementing social programs, um, Mamsel already gave an overview uh, on this one, but I think that it's uh, it, it bears repeating um, that the, really the timing of intervention is very critical, uh, and and this is um, uh, uh, it can we can see that uh, we we picked a. Um, a figure from the World Development Report in 2019, and this is uh, it, it. Really captures what it, it means because from the, uh, the 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 zero up to infancy, that's when we are learning more. That is when the brain, the infrastructure of the brain is being formed, and that is when we are able to absorb uh, information, maybe. Be, and, and and so it, it goes down as we grow older uh, and conversely um there is um, a bigger bigger effort in terms of uh the the need to uh, produce learning as we grow older because uh there's already a scientific evidence that says that the fastest synaptic growth and connection uh happens in the first uh, 1000 days 270 days in the womb and 730 days in the first two years so now if the timing is right then the uh, social programs uh, can help in correcting inequalities stemming from circumstances at birth and social origins. Uh, what do we mean when we say this? Um, it means that it doesn't matter whether you belong to a poor family or whether you belong to a rich family. Each one of us will have an equal shot at uh, having a good life, having a good career, having a good education. If um, if the social uh, programs in place are able to uh, get their policies right and if the timing of the intervention is, is right. So the timing is really critical uh, and there are already studies that says that uh, uh, interventions at the early stage of life is more effective than those administered later in life. Um, initial conditions at birth actually uh, it affects cognition and if, if it affects cognition then uh, later later on, it's going to affect uh, income uh, outcomes like income, labor force participation, a person's productivity. And there are already studies that, that says that the initial conditions at birth, meaning how you are born, the, 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 your endowment when you were born, the family background that you have, uh, is important in explaining social outcomes like crime, social engagement, trust, and voting. Uh, next slide, please. So um, uh, uh, at the center of the ECCDF1KD or the Early Childhood Care Development First 1000 Days is, is really this timing and, and it seeks to provide um, ECCD system not just for the health and nutrition but also for education uh, and psychosocial stimulation uh, and early education. Um, it's the ECCDF1KD is actually consistent with the ambition in uh, 2040 under the pillar of Pagbabago and it is our articulated as well in the uh, PDP 2017 to 22, uh, where human development is, is uh, recognized to be a means to equalizing opportunities. Um, and at the same time, um, the ECCDF1KD, if, it, if it's really successful, is it's going to help, uh, help achieve a lot of the SDG targets in ending hunger, uh, in ensuring good health and well-being, and, re and in reducing inequalities through the promotion of equal opportunities, among other things. Um, next slide, please. 
Um, so all uh, all efforts are concerted towards this timing of intervention, and Ma'am Sal already uh, mentioned about this PPAN. So the National Nutrition Con Council has crafted the PPAN, which is the country's framework plan on nutrition, um, and it has recognized that the issue in health and nutrition is uh, you know and it's multifaceted, and therefore there is a need for a complementation of programs, and so they crafted uh, programs which are nutrition nutrition specific uh, and nutrition sensitive. So when we talk of nutrition specific programs, these are programs that are planned and designed to address immediate causes of malnutrition. This includes the micronutrient uh, supplementation program, the feeding program, um, the program for addressing um, malnutrition and such. So when we talk of nutrition sensitive programs, these are programs that can be tweaked to produce nutritional outcomes and there are targets, uh, for example, in specific groups or areas that, that are supposed to be beneficiaries of these interventions. Example of this would be um, uh, Gulayan sa Paaralan, Backyard Gardening, Livelihood Programs, etc. Um, next slide, please. Uh, at the at the multilateral uh, uh, level, uh, the UNICEF, WHO, and World Bank uh, came up with uh, crafted uh, the nurturing care framework, and it's pretty much consistent with what the ECCDF one KD. This is the roadmap, um, the of strategic actions that are aimed at the holistic child development. So. Uh, being holistic, it's not just uh, 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 for sectors like health and nutrition, but also for education sector, uh, labor, finance, social protection, water and sanitation. Uh, and at the center of this nurturing care framework would be um, the household, the uh, uh, nurturing care, uh, which would takes place at the house, household level. But it recognizes that it requires strategic and synergistic action, and therefore, from the household to the national level, household community to the uh, national level, uh, they, they need to work together in order to uh, come up with solutions. Um, next slide, please. So just to show you some uh, uh, pro profile in the Philippines, uh, stunting remains a big issue. No? Based on the uh, FNRI 2018, uh, around 37% of children aged 12 to 23 are affected by stunting. And even our MMR or the maternal mortality rate uh, is still high compared to the SDG target. Uh, next slide, please. So just to show you some, uh, this is uh, uh, just to show you some information in terms of the field, uh, the the site, the study site that uh, we conducted the KIA and FGD in. It's Northern Samar, uh, and the stunting prevalence in Northern Samar is really high based on the WHO cutoff values, which is around 45.3. In fact, it uh, in Northern Samar is one of the provinces in East Eastern Visayas with the highest stunting prevalence in the region. Um, in terms of wasting prevalence, it's uh, also poor at 5.9 percent, based on again in the uh, based on the WHO cutoff values. Um, and we focused on Lopa de Vega and Catarman, and there is a substantial um, difference between the two. Lopa de Vega is a fourth class municipality, uh, 16 auto based. Uh, it's 22 barangays or Jida, and it has a very high uh, uh, stunting prevalence in 2017, but this is based on the Operation uh, Timbang administrative data that is uh, 41. And then Katarman is a first class municipality. This is the capital of Northern Samar. Um, 11, only 11 out of the 55 barangays are Jida. And based on its 2017 OPT, it has a stunting prevalence at three. Um, so, but the, the, the despite that the, the, uh, we collected uh, uh, KII and FGT, we did that for Lope de Vega and Katarman, but uh, we also collected um, other um, uh, documents from uh, other municipalities. Next slide, please. So going into the key into key message number two, not all LGUs are created equal. Number one, uh, na, not equal in terms of leadership and governance because there are some barangays uh, that are more supportive of the ECCDF one KD program, uh, and then the, their support is important precisely because there are some uh, funding that that comes. There are there, there are some uh, initiatives that need to be funded at the barangay level and and some just don't care uh, but others are uh, more aware and more supportive 
Um, second, mayors, uh, both in Lopa de Vega and Catarman, they are supportive, although uh, the priority uh, really is the, uh, are, rather, are the infrastructure projects. So mostly the fund for, for the health and nutrition program is coming from the Economic Development Fund, uh, so around 20%. This 20% is then um, uh, divided into other um, uh, priorities and only 5% goes to the health and nutrition program. Uh, and then in, in particular, the, uh, the previous governor uh, in Northern Samar abolished the Provincial Nutrition Action Office. Uh, and this has uh, substantial implications in terms of uh, technical assistance provision, um, because now there's uh, uh, there's only one at the provincial level working, which is the PINA, which is the Provincial Nutrition Action Officer, and all her staff were gone. So there's no, no the, she has no assistance in terms of, of um, providing help uh, at the municipal and barangay level. Uh, and at the same time, this is a substantial implication as well in the monitoring and uh, evaluation uh, of the program. Next slide, please. Uh, so, in terms of resources, not all LGUs are created equal again, because some uh, LGUs are less IRA dependent than others. So, you can see here we provided a sort of uh, a map uh, based on the total resources, and all almost all of them are purple. So, these are between 90 to 100 are coming, uh, or 90% 90 per, 90 to 100% uh, of their uh, total resources are coming from external resources, meaning from IRA. Um, the only two uh, municipalities that do not have that kind of color would be Katarman and Allen. Katarman is around 75%. So it, in, in Katarman, um, they have... Um, uh, IGPs or income generating projects, uh, and they have economic enterprises as well. Uh, IGP, the, the, they have this facility that produces um, snacks that are uh, sna uh, snacks that are uh, vitamin fortified, and they, they use this uh, to target. Uh, uh, they they give this uh, snacks to um, uh, municipalities. For their health and nutrition programs, and at the same time, they sell these snacks to uh, CSOs and uh, uh, institutions who'd like to uh, to to help uh, the program. And then they have economic enterprise, um, meron sila yung public market and terminal. And the good thing about this is that uh, everything goes to general fund. The collection com uh, uh, from this uh, enterprises and IGPs goes to general fund. And this, uh, it can therefore be used, uh, the LGU can therefore use to finance uh, priority programs. Next slide, please. So, because some municipalities have more funds uh, for health and nutrition than others, then the uh, uh, um, municipalities also vary in terms of the nutrition specific and nutrition uh, pro, uh, nutrition specific and nutrition nutrition specific and nutrition sensitive programs than others. So, just to, to drive the point, uh, LDB Lope de Vega and San Jose they only have um, the five percent GAD and the LCPC under the Economic Development Fund a source for the health nutrition programs and you can see that their PPAs are mostly on training, nutrition classes, uh, mostly for information purposes. But if you look, take a look at, uh, for example, Katarman and Bobon, they have uh, various sources like GAD Fund, EDA, the Economic Development Fund, the General Fund, uh, and therefore they are able to not just um, uh, uh, to implement nutrition specific programs, but also nutrition sensitive programs. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so here, oh, we, we just wanted to, to uh, again, drive the point that not all LGUs are equal uh, because we can see that the expend expenditures of most northern summer uh, municipalities are heavily concentrated in general public services. So uh, to our left, to our left, the one with the purple, uh, we can see that most of them are, are spending their total resources in uh, general public services. General public services, these are um, services like uh, civil service, yung mga sweldo ng uh, civil servants, uh, yung sa um, peacekeeping, safety, yan, doon. Uh, and then if we, to our right, the green uh, graphs would be the uh, municipality's expenses in terms of uh, 
this is economic services. So you can see that again, Katarman is uh, uh, spending around 33% compared, for example, to other municipalities like Silvino Lobos, which is only at 5%, the others are 8%. So you can see this is a substantial disparity there. Um, next slide, please. So here, what we're saying is that um, there is a need for um, uh, the uh, LGUs to develop income uh, IGPs and uh, uh, economic enterprises to increase funds. And they can do the, this by assessing what businesses have the potential to flourish in the local context. Uh, first is to identify the types of assistance that can be provided. So for example, uh, do, do they need provision? Uh, uh, do they need provision uh, of training, development of skills, facilitation of loans, and linking up with potential partners such as CSOs and social enterprises? There is also the, uh, a need to um, it probably they can explore the use of the 2022 increase in the IRA to strengthen factors that can help in nutrition-related issues. Uh, so uh, one thing that they can do here is to create plantilla positions to nutrition personnel because um, we found out that um, the MNA or the Municipal Nutrition Action Officer and the PNA, which is the Provincial Nutrition Action Officer, they are currently designated officers. So that means that they have to do things other than be the other than the implementing overseeing the implementation of health and nutrition uh, programs and and you know being able to give them this um, plenty plenty of position, they'd be able to focus more. Um, in terms of monitoring, uh, in terms of um, implementation. Next slide, please. So in terms of key message number three, we say here that poverty and the lack of economic opportunities and geographical isolation adversely affect health and nutrition outcomes. Um, and then, then we provided here the map for uh, poverty based on the small area estimates in 2015. Um, and the, and the, uh, the thing here is that if you look at Sil Silvino Lobos, which has the highest poverty incidence, 46% uh, of its total workforce are in elementary occupation. So these are uh, people who are wor working using basic and um, uh, basic tools, essentially. And then 44% are in a AFR, or Agriculture, Fishery, and Resources. Um, and we all know that AFR is uh, always affected by fluctuation in prices and by the vagaries of weather. So uh, it, 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 there's an issue of stability of income here. Um, and if you take a look at Qatar Man, Katarman is the again as we have said the, uh, Katarman. I can I can see that I can see the slide. Katarman uh, Katarman here is uh, the they, it it has very low uh, uh, stunting prevalence, but and then at the same time uh, the. It has varied uh, occupation groups, like for example, 21% are in uh, uh, are in AFR, 21 are managers. So there's a, there's substantial variation. And then in terms of being a JIDA, um, uh, Katarman only has around 20, uh, around 21%. Uh, let me just check because I can't see uh, from the screen the numbers. Uh, uh, twenty percent for Katarman, and then Lope de Vega around seventy three percent, and Silvino Lobos that has a, a very high poverty incidence uh, is actually a Gido municipality. Next slide, please. So uh, for keep uh, again uh, going into the key, key message number three. Uh, the poverty is really very important here because it can influence feeding a lot of things. It can influence uh, feeding practices of infants and young children. So on the ground, uh, we we found out that children are eating junk foods with rice precisely because they, uh, their parents have no money to to um, to give children uh, in terms of baon. Um, the RUTFs are sh shared uh, with everyone in the household when in fact it should be on it, it should be only used for. Uh, a child. Um, and then the exclusive breastfeeding is also affected by mother's nutrition. Um, uh, poverty can also influence the attitudes of caregivers. And we have to uh, keep in mind that, you know, uh, for most of these people, uh, poverty has become a way of life. Uh, they are, they, they have, uh, they are poor now, but uh, probably or their parents are poor and even their four uh, fathers are poor. So, so the, the idea here is that um, it, the poverty can, uh, uh, you know, can influence mindset 
No, uh, so in terms of there's a problem of hygiene, there's a problem of laziness, uh, there's a problem of information fatigue, uh, in the sense that uh, we're always uh, uh, from in the ground. The, the people were saying that um, uh, we're always hearing this uh, this uh, uh, information, but nothing happened. So why why are we going to listen? So uh, there there's there are a lot of, of, of uh, things that uh, come out when when we talk of uh, poverty, and, and at the same time, exclusive breastfeeding is also affected uh, by the mother's desire to go out and work. And so what we're saying here is that um, there is a need uh, to ensure that poor, uh, poor families are uh, four-piece uh, beneficiaries. Uh, and LGU has to take the lead here because they need to ensure that their constituents are advised of the conduct of the Listahanan. Um, the Listahanan is the National Household Targeting System for Poverty Reduction and is the one that is used uh, by DSWD to identify uh, and select uh, four-piece beneficiaries. So LGUs uh, need to ensure Sure. Uh, wait, uh, there's a message that locks. Wait, uh, okay. Um, ensure that live births are recorded at the local registry, and then the LGUs need to help uh, families in going through the process of the lead registration. And this is very important. This this documents very important because without this, they won't be able to get into the program. Uh, and the second thing that we want to emphasize here is that there is a need to craft appropriate uh, livelihood assistance programs and strengthen the monitoring of such. Um, there's another message that's blocking. Uh, I will just. Uh, so there is a need to address mismatch, uh, understand the problems and challenges. Uh, in fact, people were saying that, you know, uh, LGUs and people who are implementing these programs, they need to go to the community and immerse. Uh, and so that they'd be able to understand what we, what the community really need. So in order to ensure, ensure buy-in, um, there's another message I need to, I can't see because I can, I could not see. Uh, uh, to ensure buy-in, there is a need to consult with the community, it, and it's going to foster some sense of ownership of the projects. Um, address sustainability issues as well, because the, the, the thing is, uh, people are saying that, oh, they just gave us seedlings and they just gave us uh, um, uh, um, li livestock or, or pigs or hogs for racing, but th then again, they did not monitor what happened. Then did, did it turn? Did 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 they um, sell it? Did it turn into something more like uh, something more profitable? So there's no such thing that's uh, in place. Um, so another th uh, another thing that we're saying here is that there there is a need to explore tie-ups with social enterprises. Um, social enterprises. These are. Um, uh, businesses that uh, puts the community at the center of their operation, and and they are more aware and highly evolved in terms of, um, uh, in terms of doing their business. So in, they they employ poor people, uh, or or women, or people with issues, the, or uh, victims of certain issues. Uh, wait, uh, there's another message I need to because I could not see. Sorry. Um, uh, Right, so, uh, yeah, okay, so uh, next slide, please. So here, uh, key message number four, uh, there are existing and emerging issues uh, or concerns in the supply side as well. Uh, one issue is the related to uh, 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 frontline workers, the BNS, the Barangay Nutrition Scholars, uh, and uh, Barangay Health Workers. Uh, one is that um, they sometimes complain of inadequate honorarium. And again, this uh, the, the, the key message number two figures here, because uh, sometimes it depends on the LGU. Sometimes, uh, uh, they will get 500, sometimes they get 1,250, sometimes they get five, uh, 1,500. Um, and then there's an excessive workload uh, because the ideal, uh, ideal, this is what we get from the ground, ideal is only one BHW or Barangay Health Workers for every 20 households, but this really, really never happens. This never happens. It, it goes way more than uh, so, and therefore there is an excessive workload. And the third one would be uh, hiring and firing is LC's discretion. Uh, and therefore, uh, there is a very high turnover among these frontline workers. Uh, and then, and the problem here is that it hampers the continuity of the F1KD implementation. They're going to train again because the people that uh, replace the other, the, the past uh, uh, frontline workers uh, do not know how to do, do the measurement, stuff like that. Uh, and so there are a number of barangays that do not have uh, BNSs. And this, this hampers actually really the, uh, the implementation of 
uh, uh, yeah, the F1 KD uh, program. Uh, second is that uh, there there are also issues uh, flagged by uh, people, uh, uh, mothers, parents, uh, caregivers, uh, in terms of the behavior of the RH personnel. So sometimes they're saying, "Oh, they're unsympathetic, they're dismissive." And even in the queuing system in the RH, you can be based uh, on friendship association with some health workers. There, there are also issues on supply, so in, in, uh, inadequate uh, perisulfate uh, tablet with folic acid, which is important in, in uh, for pregnant women. Um, issue also in transportation, safety and security, especially for the barangays and armed con conflicts. So most of these areas do not have health centers. And, and then so you can just imagine what's uh, happening there. Um, and then there are also emerging needs and issues. Uh, for example, the M nows and P nows are uh, saying that uh, they don't have um, capacity yet in terms of identifying, um, in terms of dealing rather dealing with parents and caregivers that have mental health problems. Um, there is also an increasing prevalence of teenage pregnancy, especially in Katarman, and obesity and TB in young children. Uh, and at the same time, they, they, there's a difficulty in terms of identifying malnourished pregnant mothers and nutritionally, nutritionally at risk uh, women. Um, next slide, please. And then, so therefore, here what we're saying is that there's really a need to strengthen the human resources working on nutrition uh, and, and to provide training not on, uh, and not only in the technical skills, but also in communication and advocacy strategy, because they need to demonstrate competence and uh, so that uh, they will be trusted more by the parents and caregivers. So they need technical skills, data collection, uh, identification of nutritionally at risk women and communication uh, skills as well. Uh, and, and, and secondly, there is a need to really improve the delivery of health and nutrition uh, PPAs, uh, pro programs, projects, and uh, activities, also, uh, especially in GDA areas. Uh, so increase honorarium and improve logistics. Next, next slide, please. The last one. Here, key message number five uh, has something to do with uh, caregiving practices. And uh, here, uh, mothers and caregivers, they know already what to do, but there are some challenges. So, for example, uh, they know they, they know a lot about health and nutrition, so they know where to seek uh, advice from. They are aware of the signs of malnutrition. They are aware of the symptoms of pregnancy, and they are aware of the red flags. Um, and so, in terms of health and nutrition, they are okay. In terms of security and safety, they are also aware of everything, of what, what, what expectant and lactating mothers should do and should not do, should not eat, should not drink um they're all aware of that the only thing that uh was um, uh brought uh into our attention was in the area of learning um only a few of the mothers or caregivers are aware of the importance of neurological stimulation so th this is the one that where uh, even in the womb um, parents uh, need to uh to read to children, to, to talk to the in, uh, unborn, uh, to play music to the unborn, and very few uh, read the kids and play music. And so what we're saying here is that, uh, again, strengthen the promotion of neuro neurological um, uh, stimulation of the unborn, infants and young children. So this can be highlighted in mother's classes, uh, family development sessions, doctor's consultation, home visits, and even in the uh, crafting and design of the IEC materials. Uh, and lastly, there is a need to rethink strategies for communicating health and nutrition advocacy for behavior change. Uh, uh, earlier, I was pointing uh, out that there's an information fatigue already among uh, parents and caregivers. Um, and then so uh, we were thinking that maybe if, if, the, if there's some way to localize the IEC materials, because from what we heard from the ground, the IEC materials are coming from the NN, NNC, from the national level. Uh, and therefore, um, if uh, maybe localize the IEC materials, uh, it can uh, inspire people by, by putting a face of success, uh, a, a face on success story. So you use local stories that are closer to home and being closer to home, it's relatable. And, and so people might be able to relate more uh, to the um, advocacy and communication strategy. Uh, lastly, uh, use catchy and easy to remember lines, who got lines formed in the dialect uh, in order to um, strengthen uh, communication uh, strategies. Uh, I think that's it for me. I turn over the floor to Sheila.